hybrid and combined carnality with Christianity so much that he now can form a false church. And he's done so in many cases. Professor. If you can kneel down in public to respect your husband, how are you going to kneel down in the bedroom? He said, if you cannot kneel down to respect your husband in public, how will you kneel down in the bedroom? And what, what is he talking about here? He's talking about oral sex. He's talking about kneeling down for oral sex or some type of sex position. This is perverted in the church. And this is who you call men of God. Lovi didn't go and say, this is wrong. No one said it. People are just laughing and walking away. This is demonic. Somebody be delivered in Jesus' name. And people are clapping. Oh, my gosh. This is perverted. This is perversion. How can you even put that in the minds of people in a church saying, if you, if you don't kneel down in public, how are you going to kneel down for your husband in the bedroom? But I want you to know that the church, the true church, will never be polluted and never be confused and never bow its knee to the culture of this day. I'll keep talking till somebody joins in. The true church will never give in to the culture and the confusion and the chaos of this day. Oh, no, no, no. We were born again. We were washed in the blood. We have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. We know the scriptures. And better yet, we know our God. Hallelujah. We know it, and we are too deep in this to be fooled by a new wave of false Christianity. I want to preach uh, just for a second of your time. In this day and age, it's becoming increasingly difficult to distinguish between the church and what could be likened to a demonic shrine. The unholy infiltration that has seeped into the very fabric of our congregations has created an opening for demons to enter. And let me tell you, my dear brothers and sisters, demons aren't always these frightening creatures with long horns and menacing teeth. No, they can be much more insidious than that. The person sitting right next to you in church or even the one leading the congregation could unknowingly be a carrier of demonic influence. Their decisions, their lifestyle choices, even their demeanor, these could all be subtly engineered by demons to advance the agenda of the evil one. You know, it's become more important than ever to be discerning about the churches we choose to be a part of and the pastors we look up to. The devil, he's gotten crafty, switching up his tactics to catch us off guard. That's why we've got to be extra careful about who we're following, especially when we see fellow Christians promoting worldly attitudes out in the open or saying things that don't exactly line up with the teachings of Jesus right there in the church. Y'all online, forgive me, because I'm about to go off on these people here. Because when I'm talking warfare and you're just sitting there like you're at a movie, you don't understand you are in the midst of a war. And if you don't wake up, you will gonna suffer casualties. You got to wake up and realize we are in a fight, the fight of our lives. The old saints used to sing a song, the fight is on, oh Christian soldier. It's face to face with stern array, with armor gleaming and colors streaming, the right and wrong engaged today. The fight is on, but be not weary. Be strong and brave and hold steadfast. With God before us, and his banner o'er us, we'll sing the victory song at last. We don't sing that song enough. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm telling you. We are engaged in a war, and you need to open your eyes. Because it's a war that is on, that is absolutely relentless. 
And we don't have time to sleep. After all, we've been asleep for too long. And Paul told the church of Rome, he said, it's time to wake up out of your sleep. Because now is our, our salvation nearer than when we believed. It's time to wake up and realize we are fighting a fight. Well, wait a minute. The Bible said that, he, that you don't have a need to fight. No, not a natural enemy, but we are fighting spirits, principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. I don't hear anybody. We got, we're dealing with demonic powers. And we are the answer. And we are the answer to every demonic power. We have been given the power to tread upon serpents. Yeah, they're going to come against us, but we got the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And we're supposed to make the enemy mad that they got the assignment over us. We're supposed to make the demons mad that they got us as an assignment. Because I'm going to make you understand that greater is he. I feel like preaching. You know, one of the reasons we see some pastors boldly veering off course is because the whole dynamic of church has shifted. It's become transactional, like a business deal where you give something in exchange for something else. And when the focus becomes all about what you can get out of it, rather than seeking after God's heart, that's when things start to go off track. It's like, instead of coming to church to seek after God and his truth, some folks are just looking for miracles or blessings, almost like they're shopping for something they can add to their lives. And when that becomes the main goal, it's easy to lose sight of what really matters and fall into the trap of the devil's schemes. But here's the thing, God is calling us to a higher standard. He's calling us to repentance, to turn away from this transactional mindset and be born again, renewed in our commitment to truly represent Christ in everything we do. That means shifting our focus from what we can get out of God to what we can give to him, our love, our obedience, our devotion. It means being intentional about seeking his will and his ways, even when it's not convenient or easy. And when we do that, when we truly surrender our lives to him and allow his spirit to work in and through us, that's when we'll see real transformation, not just in our own lives, but in the life of the church as a whole. So let's heed God's call to repentance today. Let's turn away from the empty promises of this world and turn our hearts fully towards him. And let's commit to being true representatives of Christ, shining his light and sharing his love with a world that so desperately needs it.